Folks, hello and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. Discord server, Mimi group, Facebook group, Twittering, and theoretically the Instagram thing, but I don't think I've logged into Instagram in over a year. So if you're following me on Instagram, you have my sympathies. So today I'm looking at the first fantasy campaign. Now, why am I looking at the first fantasy campaign? Well, I've been slowly making my way through John Peterson's Game Wizards. And it's an interesting read. It's a very enjoyable read. I've been digesting it very slowly. Pretty much when uh, Rich has physical therapy appointments, I take it with me on my on my iPad and I read it in my Kindle app and get a, a couple more pages down. But you can see that there was a strong battle of wills going on between Gary and Dave. And, you know, Gary's the one that uh, pretty much owned uh, shares in the company. They weren't controlling shares, but he had the controlling personality, at least initially, right? And uh, him and Dave had a falling out because... I th- uh, Dave's vision of what D&D should be and what Gary's vision of what D&D should be were probably incompatible right from the start, which is why I would guess the original white box is as incomplete as it is in a lot of ways. But Dave has a magic item which I have up on the screen, which I think is awesome. Because before the internet, before social media, before getting going on to Twitter and saying mean things about people or uh, exposing uh, whatever is going on at Wizards of the Coast or Paizo, right? And saying, oh, this got these bad things going on. Um, Dave had the egg of coot. Now, what else is spelled with the letters of egg? E G G. E. Gary Gygax. So, he can certainly say, I have no idea who you think I'm talking about, while at the same time giving a finger to the person that he was talking about. This all-consuming personality lives off the egos of others to support his own ego. At one time, millennia ago, of Humanoid, oh, sorry, at one time of humanoid characteristics today, his exact physical description. Millennia, millennia. Oh. My, oh. my, I'm being corrected by my wife, folks. It happens. She's right no, to correct. I read it wrong. I read it wrong. It's a hard thing to read, Rachie. Sorry, darling. I really didn't. I will blame it on the COVID. There it is. That's the problem. His exact physical description is unknown. In fact, it is not even known for sure if. He, it, has a physical appearance. Theories say that he is now a huge mass of jointly operating cells, a huge mass of jelly, a giant thickly hided egg, pure energy, a man, a mass of living rock, etc. It is generally acknowledged that the physique of this creature is too horrible for any mortal to behold, and that it carries out its activities through the use of surrogates. That's where it becomes interesting, right? which it controls or has programmed. All communications with this beast are through direct mental contact or via his throne room, which is dominated by a huge old world artifact said to be an ancient war machine through which it communicates directly via voice transmission from some other area of its city palace. So if you were going to try to say, fuck you, uh, you're a horrible fucking person and working with you has been one of the worst experiences of my life. But you can't say that, right? Because there's no medium that's going to allow you to say that. You don't have social media. You, 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 you put it like this, right? And then you have some little subparts here. One, enjoys little jokes like scrolling obscene words and phrases on the walls of latrines and garbage cans to show its power. Skywriting, pulling the wings off of flies, etc. 
general level of jokes indicates a level 11, no, level 2, sorry. Roman numeral, I screwed up on that one. Level 2 intelligence with a mature age of 3 to 6, never having been denied anything. Now, I'm going to definitely say uh, Game Wizards is, is a great read. And it, although none of this comes out directly there, you can see that Dave felt that he was being screwed by the powers to be at TSR. He thought he was not getting his, his proper recompense, his proper pay, his proper royalties for D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, and books that were derived from Dungeons and Dragons, which is probably why AD&D came out to remove Dave from the equation altogether, but neither here nor there. Um, two, has a huge laboratory that turns out spells for selling. Now, this is about profits, right? Which are, of course, perfection itself. 30% chance of failure per level of spell. So, level 3, 50%. Level 2, 40%. I, doesn't, the numbers don't make sense, but I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. Um, of historical interest is when the Ron of a uh, Fu. Now, I don't know if that's uh, Dave trying to mention himself. I don't think so. I, I don't know. I don't know the historical. I don't know the historical aspect of this. I'd like to hear some insight from somebody. Maybe it's in the book. I haven't gotten that far. Um, when the Ron of Afu served in the factory as a spellmaker but was kicked out when he surpassed the egg standard of excellence, which, since the perfect standard is impossible to suppress, sur surpass or suppress, surpass, meant that he, the Ron, had committed the ultimate wrong and was forced to flee rather than become the newest human victim to be experimented on. Wow. Wow. Do you, do you see some bitterness in this? I exceeded... I exceeded the master. And therefore, since I was better than the egg, the old coot, right? Because there was also an age differential between the two. Um, I was better than the old coot, and therefore I had to flee because the wrath of the old coot was going to come down on me. Three, all close servants of the egg undergo rigorous mental conditioning that is aimed at crushing all their mental initiative. This is then replaced by the overwhelming desire to serve the egg and do exactly as it wished. Part of the standard conditioning has them believing that all the egg does and communicates is good and right, with all unbelievers being those jealous of the egg's perfection and should be treated accordingly. Four, the egg is known to hold an unshakable grudge against anything that has ever in any way caused it difficulty that was not immediately overcome. It will direct its efforts exclusively towards the demise of this force, even to the extent of ignoring past offenders in order to go after the newest threat. This is the result of the egg's tremendous self-esteem, which admits no failings. So, uh, Gary... Mike feels that he, or felt that he was perfect. It, this is Dave's perspective. And I can see that because I have heard stories, uh, not from Gary, but from others that have told me that when uh, Blackmore, the manuscript for Blackmore was presented, it was pretty much handwritten notes that were not really in a sense of any kind of continuity, and they had to make sense of that. Now, I was not there at the time. Uh, and any sources that I may have likely were on the side of the egg of coot, right? So they would probably be biased, even if the bias still is an accurate description. So, but this gives you Dave's perspective. And... Uh, you know, it's not like we can interview Dave, which we could. So, five. 
The best insight into the egg's ambitions are in its creed, which is daily intoned by hundreds of conditioned followers around his capital. Might is right. Might is right. Again, he who has the power makes the decisions, right? Don't give a sucker an even break. Winning is everything. Get what you want by hook or by crook. Uh, according to the game, which is Dave certainly felt that he was being taken advantage by hook or by crook. Uh, the ends always justify the means used to achieve it. The meek may inherit the earth, but that means the strongest will rule everything. I fear the rest of the creed is a bit too strong for our Gentile readers and deal with certain breeding privileges and customs. Let it suffice that when an area is captured by the egg, it shortly undergoes a dramatic population decline and acquires a new and very unhuman population composition. I just find this... When you know... And I'm sure there are a lot of gamers from the time. Remember, you are... If you're watching this video, if you watch other YouTube videos, if you read the blogs, if you're on N-World or any of these sites, you're more wired in than any of us could have been back in those days. I started gaming in 79, 80. The only information I ever got about what was going on in gaming was from Dragon Magazine, Different Worlds, uh, Space Gamer, Fantasy Gamer. Uh, you know, you weren't getting somebody... Uh, from gaming, from from one of these companies, putting their thoughts on the internet and being read immediately uh, by hundreds of thousands of tens of thousands of gamers, didn't happen. So this was subversive. And I find it very interesting. I find it very much a, a piece of its time. It's a great example of the time frame, but. Uh, it's pretty cool too, right? I, I like the, I, it, it, it's, an, it, it's the glove in the face and still saying, oh, prove it's you. Because to say that you know it's you means that you know a lot of these attributes are attributable to you. Right? So you got to kind of go, oh, well, they recruit isn't me. You got a guy, guys, right? EGG? Uh, oh, no. Nah, it, it it's just a coincidence because those attributes don't, none of those are attributable to me. me. I just thought it was interesting. I thought it'd be a fun observation, and I thought it'd be an interesting way to uh, one of the things to kick off the new year, right? No, no, no bad news, right? No, this is this is entertaining. So, if you have observations of the first fantasy campaign, I'd love to see you leave a message, uh, a comment down below, um, or. Leave a voicemail, 347-509-5168. I listen to them all, even if we don't get them all up on the uh, the cast. If you're listening on Anchor, God bless you. I, I don't think I put anything up in two weeks since I've had COVID. Um, hey, no nap today. So that's a good sign, right? Maybe maybe things are returning to normal. Still slept into like 1030, but no nap. So maybe, maybe, maybe we're healing enough. Um, like I said, I, I have the uh, the Omicron. Um, we're in the midst of the world of COVID. Right? I, I'm not telling you to get vaxxed and don't get vaxxed. I'm not saying wear a mask or don't wear a mask. Okay? Your medical decisions are based upon your health, your medical history, your specific parameters that apply to you. And you should confer with a medical professional that knows your, me your medical history, knows what category you fall into and what it, their advice should be guided by that. So ignore the talking heads on TV and ignore the talking heads on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, I'm a talking head. I understand that. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying get professional advice. Be safe. Be well. God bless. Roll those dice. Roll them well. Tomorrow, Friday the 7th, um, Iron Rations. No, not Iron Rations. The, the, the Dungeons, Dragons, and Discourse. Glenn Halstrom, 8 p.m. Tomorrow, Friday. And today is Three Kings Day, right? January 6th. 
So it's day 13 of OSR Christmas. We got some really big things being offered for OSR Christmas. So uh, check in at 10 Uh Day 13, I think we'll leave it up for a couple of days so people can get their comments in. Uh, it should be a good one, really. All right, folks. On that note, God bless. I'll catch you later.